Hello, 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 hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how I carve out volumes, architectural volumes with sunlight. And I do so to minimize the shadow that are cast from my architectural designs onto the surrounding buildings. That's the main reason. Also to kind of uh, make sure that the municipality workers are happy uh, with the proposals. But that kind of comes hand in hand. So without any further ado, let's let's begin. So what I have here on the screen is just like a very simplistic uh, drawing, 2D drawing of a part of the Malmo city, a city in which I live. And here you can see like the, 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 the new development or rather the factory area. And this is the old town. And I chose one site right here in the old town in which we will will not be designing in it, but we will be creating this kind of three dimensional envelope, which will show a volume in which we should design. So we're going to kind of create restrictions for ourselves with sunlight. It will make sense, I promise. So the first thing is that, that you need to do is, you know, you need to have a side boundary and you also need to have um, boundaries of surrounding buildings, right? Uh, the Honestly, the height of the buildings is not it's it's not necessary for you to know the height of the buildings but the boundary is very important how close the buildings are to the and also honestly how uh, how low the windows are of the surrounding building so what's the elevation at which the windows start i'll i'll get to that in a second let's jump into grasshopper and let me show you the initial setup so i'm using ladybug for this Right, so if you don't have Ladybug, it's available on Food for Rhino. Do I have it open here? No, I don't. Okay, so just trust me. <laughs> it's available on foodforrhino.com and you just download it. And the installation um, part is a little bit different from what you would ex usually expect from Grasshopper plugins. So uh, just follow the instructions that come with the zip file and you'll be good. Once you have Ladybug installed, what you will want is, um, I don't really remember, I think it's under Visualize Data, uh, Ladybug Sky or Sun Path. This, this bad boy right here. Let's just wait a second. There it is. I'm using 1.3 version, by the way. So, of course, naturally, it will not work immediately. We need some inputs to create the, the overall sky sun path i want to say sky path for some reason the sun path for our scene or for our site so we need to tell tell it where the north is right what's the dir direction of the north also we need to say the location of our site and we need to say which hours of the year would we like to simulate right uh, to get the position of the sun from um and those are kind of the main three things that we will be working with. So the first thing is north. That's very easy. Right here um, in my drawing, it's already aligned with north being like going straight up when we're looking at the top view. That means that north is aligned with the y direction, which you can see here in the bottom, bottom left, right? So for north, I'll just create unit y and connect it like so. Then for location, oh, uh, should I, do I have bifocals on this one? No, I don't. Okay, you will need to deal with me not, not showing the names of the, of the nodes. I will tell you the names. Then for location, it's a little bit more difficult. And um, if you read the tooltip, it says it needs you, you either use a EPW file, uh, or you use uh, construct location node, right? So let's let's use construct location node for this one because uh, I, I I feel like the workflow is a little bit more flexible that way. Construct location. This one. Enter. Let's just straight up connect the location to the location input. <laughs> Easy. And then it asks us for four things or. Sorry, five things. The name, 
So I'll just give it a name with a panel. Uh, Malmo. Sure. Name, Malmo. And then latitude and longitude. So that is going to be a little bit of a difficult one, right? Because we don't... I, can't, I don't remember them for sure. So what we do is we straight up go to Google Maps like that. And there's Copenhagen, there's Malmo. We zoom in to the place where we want to evaluate. And it doesn't need to be accurate. It's somewhere here, right? It's one of these. So it doesn't matter. I just right click and there's my um, latitude and longitude. I click on that and it says copy it to clipboard. Great. Now I can go back in here into uh, Grasshopper, slash slash, enter to create a panel, double click the panel, control V, and then click anywhere outside. Don't hit enter, just click anywhere outside. So what we initially have is the latitude and the longitude separated by a comma. Here we need them to be input as two separate uh, inputs. <laughs> so what we will do is we will separate these two numbers uh, and we will use the comma as a separator. Um, I think it's called text split. Text split. Enter. There we go. Text to split, we just connect our text and the splitting uh, character or separator is the comma. So I'm just going to create a new panel with a comma inside of it, just a comma. So slash slash comma enter. Connected like so. So now when I look at it, the output of it, I can see 55. 0.6 and 13, right? And there is a space right here, but we don't really care. Uh, it's, it's going to understand that we don't need the space, right? So now we have them in two separate lines as a list, right? So what we do to separate them is we use list item. List item. I connect the output of the split to the list item L input. And then here I will get the first item of the list. To get the second one, I click on this plus sign. Uh, you can only see the plus sign, by the way, when you zoom in. So zoom in. Uh, click on the plus sign. So this is like item index zero, which means the first item on the list. This is item index one, which is the first item, uh, sorry, the second item of the list. So latitude, longitude. We just straight up connect those two, like so. And we're Gucci. So now we know the exact position of uh, or, or place of our um, site. Next up, we have the time zone. So it's Greenwich time that the UK time is zero. If you're going towards east, for instance, towards Sweden or, or towards Russia, it's plus, if you're going towards west, it's minus, right? Yes, uh, it even says that in the tooltip. So we're doing, um, I believe, uh, Copenhagen and, and Malmo is plus one, right? So slash slash, just one, right? One, one hour <clears throat> difference from, from the UK time towards the east. And then last one is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, last one is elevation, how high our site is. And honestly, for this one, there's there are multiple resources. And the one that I'm, I'm using here is, uh, I just Googled uh, Malmo uh, topology, uh, topographic map, sorry. Uh, but instead it gave me Lund for some reason, but we don't really care. Uh, so I just zoom out and it doesn't need to be accurate, by the way. By the way, th this one is a pretty nice one as well, because you, you can get the whole damn Sweden and then you can look at Denmark and see how um, how flat it is compared to Sweden. But then you look at freaking Norway. And once Norway gets in the picture, Sweden just turns completely <laughs> green, uh, green, right? So, yeah. There's always a bigger fish, I guess, in terms of mountains. So coming back here, there's Malmo. 
if I zoom, zoom, zoom <clears throat> to that particular site, it's going to be very close to, to the sea level, right? So it's going to be uh, right here and it's around, let's go for uh, 10, 10 meters, let's go for 10 meters above sea level, right? So very, very close to the sea. Close that and for elevation, all I need to do is just add a 10 to it, 10 meters. And that's it. We have an accurate location, right? This is an accurate location. Then, then, hours, 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 <laughs> hours of the day, right? Uh, or of the year. So it's short for hoys, is short for how hour of the year. Um, I think we can do calculate hoy, right? Calculate hoy. And it gives us the output of hoys uh, as long as you give it month, day, hour, minute. We don't give a crap about minutes, so I'm just going to give it a zero. But we will care about month, day, and hour, especially the hour, hours, right? So I'll connect hoys, hoys. Hoys <laughs> in, in, into the hoys input, and then uh, let's just read the tooltips again. So months are described by numbers from one to twelve. Easy. So I will just create a slider one dot dot twelve like that. So this is initially January, right? Then days are described also in numbers one to thirty one. Of course, one dot dot thirty one connected like that. January 1st. And then hours are described between 0 and 23. 0 dot dot 23. Bam. So midnight of January 1st right now. Let's not do that. Let's instead have like, uh, I wait, let's do this because I know that this is April. <laughs> so April 11th, um, let's say uh, 3 o'clock. Sure. Right. If I look at the the, the, the widget that that uh, ladybug cr creates, it's this this bad boy right here. If you don't see it, by the way, um, that might mean that it's super big or super small. Right. So one thing that if you just don't see it, one thing that you might want to change is the scale. And also the center point because it's always going to be located around the world zero 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 point. Uh, so you can change the center point to let's say, if I do a curve, set one curve, this one, and I do an area or set curve, I get the center point, and I can use that center point for uh, as as my center for 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 this um, what you call it the, the the widget right the, the solar path widget and this point right here on the widget is exactly where the the direction of the sun uh, where, where it's going to be shining from at this precise hour at this precise location which is nice then for scale um if you want it bigger you just do scale two right so then it's bigger bigger smaller easy right just mess around with the scale until you see it okay back to actually now using this because we do have uh, a pretty decent setup here but now this site needs to be informed by the sun right and it needs to be some somehow influenced by the sun so the thing that we're going to be using only from this output block is the vectors that's the only thing that we care about the direction of the sun right and what we will be doing is we'll be thinking about it other way around. Um, the sun should reach the facades of the surrounding buildings at times, which I which I will give here. Right. So we're not initially we will not be doing will not be mapping the sunlight to our site, rather we will be mapping this direct sunlight, right? Those directions will be mapped to the facades of our 
of our surrounding buildings. And the way we can do that is, well, first of all, let's clean this up a bit. Um, let's not look at the land. Let's not look at the hatches. Let's just look at the surrounding buildings and only the ones that I, that I care about. So only these ones, the inner courtyards don't matter by the way. So I'm not selecting those. So all of this, all of the surrounding buildings here, I will isolate them. This one is going to be problematic because it's not closed off. So I'm going to actually remove the, these two uh, small curves and close it off, close curve. And now we have ourselves, uh, how many are there? Four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight surrounding buildings, right? And let's, uh, for, the, for the sake of, you know, ju just having them here, let's create a planner surface for them. I'll just delete the curves themselves, change this to shaded view. So we're, we've created basically the footprint of them as surfaces, and I'm going to extrude them up by, let's say four floors, right? So four floors, uh, let's go for 16 meters. Oh, we're in millimeters. I'm stupid. Uh, let's go for uh, 16,000 millimeters. Bam. So we have, you know, some sort of a surrounding situation going on. Well, now this is still not enough because what we need is we need um, the exact line where the sun shouldn't cross after a certain hour on each of these surrounding facades. So what I'm going to do is I'll create a new layer and I'll call it um, uh, lowest lines, whatever, something like that. Uh, change this to pink, make it my active layer. And also um, I will disable the preview of the sun path because it's getting in the way. And I'll just choose the, the the curves of the surrounding facades which i don't want the the light to go um sorry the shadows shouldn't go above them so duplicate edge this one um i guess it's this one this one can be influenced by this corner then this facade for sure uh, let's go for this facade. This one is a little bit awkward, so I'm not going to choose that. This one for sure. This one for sure. This one. This one is too small, so I don't care. Um, these two. Um, this one will not get influenced, but these two will. These and oops nope not that one these this this and that i think like just looking at it i i think it's pretty clear what oh okay this one as well i think it's pretty clear on what i'm trying to achieve with this honestly let's just choose that one as well um i'm i'm, I'm trying to get uh these these edges these are the facades which will act as like a threshold or, or a testing area which will test if the sun can reach them or not and according to that they will carve the volume okay so duplicate edge is finished and now let's just say for the sake of saving time let's just say that the windows for each of these facades they all start in the same height Right, so they all start, let's say, 1.5 or let's do 2 meters above the street level. Not 2 millimeters, come on. 2 meters, 2,000. There we go. So we have a bunch of curves here. I will just group them so that it's easier for me to select them later. We have a bunch of curves here, right? Then we start designing. <laughs> well, not designing, but we start actually kind of working on the site and then working with 
with the, the, the stuff that we have here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'll reference a curve. And for this, I need to show selected. I will reference a curve, set one curve, uh, that is the boundary of my building. And I will extrude it, extrude it upwards. So unit Z by um, whatever the municipality would want me to, to have as the, you know, top constraint that the altitude constraint of my building. Let's for the sake of argument, say that it's six floors. So around 24 meters. Uh, wait, 24,000. There we go. And also I need to cap this cap done. So this is like a solid block that is uh, 24 meters high, right? A little bit higher than the rest of the buildings. Um, then, 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 then we need to start carving into it because you can even tell, tell right now that like this facade would receive a lot of shadows from this uh, volume. So we need to start kind of deciding where this volume needs to be cut. And we can do that with these vectors. So the vector is basically the, the direction of the sun at this precise day. So what we can do is we can take all of these curves. Actually, let me sell poly surface and just hide that for, for, for just a bit. Or hmm, maybe let's just select them and lock them up instead of hiding them. So I can take all of these curves, I can reference them in curve, right click, set multiple curves. There we go. And I can extrude them. Extrude. I can extrude them along a di uh, this vector direction. But I need, to, if, if I just use it this way, they're going to be extruded. Yes, but they're only going to be, I can't even zoom in that, that close. They will only be extruded by one millimeter. So instead of just straight up connecting it as a direction, I need to increase the amplitude, amplitude of these vectors. Or in this case, it's a single vector of this vector. Right. So the amplitude, uh, let's say it's going to be extruded for uh, 200 meters. To, so 200,000 millimeters. Bam. And you can see that it, it does work. But the problem is that they get extruded in the wrong direction. Right. So all we need to do is just reverse uh, the vector, reverse a vector like that that and that and now they are all extruded okay now next up is actually uh what you might call it making these into into blocks because right now we can't really carve with a single with single extrusions, with single surfaces, we need to actually make them into solids. So what I do is I just straight up extrude them again, but this time I do it in the Z direction by a hundred meters. Sure, whatever. Is that a hundred? No, that's a million. Uh, there we go. A hundred thousand millimeters. So we have these kind of big ass blocks here, right? <clears throat> that get extruded. And then pretty, pretty simple thing that we need to do. Solid difference. From our initial block, you know, our extruded site, the maximum boundary, basically, we carve out these, these blocks, right? And let me hide them. And now you can see that for this particular time of the day, it only only this facade needs uh, the volume to be 
cut open so that the light can reach it. But if I were to change the time of day, because this is like almost midday, right? So if I were to change the time of day to something a little bit lower. Oh, wait, this is the day. No, hour. Bam, 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 bam. You know, we're changing the hour. And you can see that in the morning at 8 o'clock, this facade as well as this facade needs some love, right? So we end up uh, having a, a way of how to how to carve things, right? With a single single hour. That is not good enough, right? We need more than one hour. So like the industry standard, I guess, is to use the, not the solstice, the, what's the word, equinox, equinox? Like the, the time of the year uh, when the day and night have the same amount of hours. I think it's like uh, spring equi equinox. Yeah, it's this one right here. Spring equinox. Sunday 20th, March. Okay, so since it's March, uh, month is going to be 3rd. Day is going to be 20th. And for this 3rd, uh, 20th of the 3rd day, which hours will we use? Well, we will not just use one hour, delete that. Instead, we will use multiple. So I'm going to say we will use series of numbers. All right? Series of numbers. Connect that straight up into the hours. And we will start our solar simulation, I guess. Our in, uh, starting hour is going to be, let's say, 8 o'clock in the morning. Super early. Right? For, for this particular month in Malmo. <laughs> right? Uh, eight o'clock in the morning. That's our, you know, early early hour, and then our uh, step size is we basically check every hour, so that's fine, and then our count is going to be basically how many hours do you want to have uh, in this particular or or yeah, starting from eight, how many hours will you count? Right? So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So that's already 10 hours. Um, we can say, let's do it the other way around. We can say that we want to count until 20, uh, like uh, at, at, until 8 in the evening, 20 o'clock, right? 8 in the evening. So 20 minus. 20 minus 8, that leaves us with 12 hours in between, right? And I can just connect that to the count. So, right now, this looks weird, and it doesn't seem like it's doing a lot of carving, at least not a lot of directions are taken into consideration, and that's because um, we, we messed up one thing here with the data structure. Um, how do you explain this? So here, from vectors, we get 11 different directions of the sunlight. That, that's, that's true. We, we, we do get those. And can I even show them? Ah, it doesn't matter. But uh, they are, you know, they are right here. These, uh, these points correspond to the position of the sun, right? So we do get 11 directions. But here we get we have 23 curves, right? So those 23 curves, God damn it, uh, are then... It's not like each curve gets 11 directions. No, no, no. First curve gets the first direction, second curve gets the second direction, third curve gets the third direction, and so on. So Grasshopper tries to be smart about it. We don't want it to be smart about it. We want the first curve to get all 11 directions uh, for extrusion. We want the second curve to get all directions for extrusion, and so on. So what do we do? Very simple. You right-click on the vectors, and you choose to graph them. Or you right-click on the curves, and you choose to graph them. Doesn't matter. One of these needs to be grafted. 
right? So here I'll choose vectors, right click, graft. Bam, immediately messes up our preview. That's because uh, right now the extrusions get grafted, but at least now we get 253 values out of the extrusions, you know, like this starts looking a little bit more interesting, a little bit more true to what we should be expecting to see. So I can right click on the E output here for extrusions and choose to flatten it back just so that all of the extrusions are regarded as the cutting patterns, basically. And that goes into surf, uh, surface dif diffuse. No, <laughs> surface diffuse. I'm tired. Uh, solid difference, sorry. So now when I look at this, it's still kind of messed up, you know, be, but that that is correct. Like it should be messed up because we're starting to count from eight o'clock, which is super early in the morning. And we considering, you know, when the sun rises at that time of the year uh, and we end at eight o'clock, which is right before the sunset. So, of course, it's going to carve in, like an insane amount. Instead, we can do something a little bit more forgiving. Let's say nine o'clock. And here, let's say um, seven, uh, 19 o'clock or not. Yeah, I guess you can call it 19 o'clock, right? So 19 doesn't work, 18. There we go. At least 18 starts working. Right. So when you do this, you get really kind of you start to understand how much effect your your building will have on the surrounding other surrounding buildings, basically. Um, one thing that we didn't really think about, like right now we care about everything that is on the first floor, but what if um, let me ungroup, ungroup this. What if this, this little curve right here, you have shops here, right, on the first floor. That means you have the possibility to move it up by another, let's say, three meters. That is not three meters. That is three meters. By another three meters, which in turn creates a much, much bigger volume for you, right, to, to, to mess around with. So that's pretty cool. At least I I, I think so. I, I think that's pretty cool, <laughs> right? Uh, so we can mess around with these uh, with these values, and the the less you the less amount of hours you want to give it, the better it's going to be. But at this point, we are at seven hours of daylight for all of the surrounding facades, and it, it's this is how the building is looking like. Uh, let's say we ha we add one extra one extra floor uh, for the volume. So let's uh, let's say plus four, so twenty eight meters. Bam. That's that's how your 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 shape would look like. And one last thing that I want to show you is what what I like to to do before I bake this out and start actually designing and it's if i were to take this solid difference and i were to contour it contour it bam like so the direction should be z the point for the contour right now everything in my uh, script rests on zero 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 so at zero height if it doesn't for you you should give it like a point uh, any point on this curve uh on the boundary curve but in in my case i just do you know zero 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 point and then for distance um i will say every four meters i want the contour to be there I get these, right? Then I will create boundary surface for them like that. 
and then I will extrude the boundary surface in Z direction downwards so it's going to be a negative value by um, I don't know like let's say 300 millimeters just something like that just a little something something and let's do a custom preview because you can't see anything custom preview swatch uh, maybe not white something uh, that's that's a very ugly color though let's do blue blue is nice and the shading is very off but if we change this to arctic view then you can start seeing the why is this not coloring doesn't matter um you, you can really start seeing the the, the floor slabs and start kind of investigating what kind of a <laughs> uh, what kind of output uh, you will get and once you got that output that's going to be your kind of initial starting position for the actual design phase so this is by no means this shouldn't be considered to be a design thing right it's it's just to give you an uh, um, x amount of information um custom preview that one you know and that is that that is that uh oh yeah one last thing or two two things so first one is you can see that the contour takes uh 331 milliseconds to calculate uh what i like to do is i like to convert the surface difference to a mesh and then convert it into a contour uh, just so that um, it, it's faster that's one optimization and another thing is if you again uh, a little bit of, of advertising if you're lazy and you don't want to redo this you just want to borrow this together with the you know the, the site and so on um, hit me up on patreon and the patreon supporters get the, the the files so consider consider supporting the channel and i guess besides that i'm done that's that's it that's the tool hope you enjoyed this one i'll see you in the next one later